Mining the Word, staying true to Scripture while applying it to my everyday life. This Bible is different than the one I normally bring to Mining the Word. Before we talk about why, let's pause to pray. Lord, thank you for sending your Spirit to guide us in our reflection on your Word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today is just a brief little couple of stories because there's actually a statewide, Illinois statewide convention via the telephone and Facebook Live and YouTube, and so there's an opportunity for everyone to join that, so I'm not going to take up your time. You can see in the link that is in the description how to connect with that. But just now I want to tell a story about this Bible. You see, in 1978 at Christmas, as it states here in the opening page, my father and mother gave me this Bible and it changed my life because I knew something about this Bible. At that time, there was an organization called It Is Written that if you gave a donation of $100, they would give you a Bible. And my parents made some donations that added up to enough money for a few of these Bibles. And when I received this, 1978, $100, I thought, that is a lot of money. I can't just take a $100 item, put it on the shelf, and leave it. I need to do something about this. And so I began taking this Bible, and I'd get up early in the morning, starting a new habit. You see, before this, I would read the Bible just a little here or there to kind of study a lesson for church or to read it in church or to prepare a lesson for the religion class at school, the Bible class. But now I had a different habit and it began to form things in my mind. Remember last time in Daniel 7a, we talked about how that's the fourth really key principle of Bible study is to go through large sections of scripture so that it becomes part of your understanding overall. Most of what we do is more like the third principle where we compare scripture with scripture, but this forms the background for that. Well, up in the front of this Bible, my father wrote, and these words he was quoting from Dwight Moody, this Bible can keep you from sin. Sin will keep you from this book. I realized if that's true, and if I don't really know the whole big picture, I need to take time working systematically through this Bible, this book. Eventually, over the years, it got kind of tattered and I had to have it sort of touched up a bit by some people in the bookbinding business and others like that. But over time, I shifted to uh, from the older King James to a new King James Bible that I use in these segments we share in Mining the Word. Now recently, I started another journey going through this, only in a different way. And that is, I take my Bible that's bound Hebrew Old Testament and Greek New Testament, and I started reading it now in three, I'm sorry, four different places. Something from the Gospels, something from Acts through Revelation, and then something from Genesis through Second Kings, and then after that, something that is... From Isaiah, yes, the book order is different in Hebrew, but from Isaiah to the end of that Bible. And it's interesting seeing how bits and pieces fit together. Okay, flash, back, flash forward from 1978 to 1983. I was selling Christian books, knocking on doors, and I came to a place where I saw a fire. This guy was throwing some cardboard little tube pieces into the fire, and as I walked up to his house, I thought, this will be my last stop for the day. But... He had something in mind for me that I hadn't prepared. It was just a few minutes before nine. I showed him some things from a book called Cosmic Conflict at the time. And he said, no, I don't want one of those. And he began talking with me. We ended up talking till four o'clock in the morning. But what he did was jump around from place to place, trying to take me away from the basis of faith that I had understood for all those years before that. And now I still believed what I used to believe but I wasn't sure I could demonstrate it from the Bible. I was used to taking a series of proof texts and jumping from this one to that one, and that's what he did. And for every text I brought, he had a counterpoint. And before I knew it, I was really confused. And I realized I need to go back to the Word. I need to go back and get the sense of context, because a little proof text without the context can become a pretext for something that isn't even true. 
So in these future sessions in this book, Daniel, that we've been looking at, we'll make sure that we slow down and connect it to the bigger pictures of Scripture from time to time, even though we do need to compare Scripture with Scripture and follow the other principles from last week. That's all for today, because we want you to have time to join the others in the state of Illinois. Please look in the description for that link. Let's pray briefly. Lord God, thank you for your word. Help us to let it transform us from the inside. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.